we were doing a training this weekend because uh, as we began to open the Crisis Counseling Center, I was like, Lord, what kind of counseling training and what kind of approach do we want to use? And and uh, I don't know if y'all have ever heard God called Jehovah Sneaky, but he will sneak up on you. And if you trust him, he will align your path. And it's beautiful to watch him do that. And I was actually on a Zoom call one day for a whole nother subject. It wasn't even about the Legacy Center. And I was five minutes into the conversation when the lady I was talking to, Kathy Little, said, um, let me tell you about this. What happened on that conversation, as I said uh, to Kathy Little, I really need you guys to come and do a training. And she said, well, we're starting to do that. And I said, how quickly can we do it? And I mean, that was just, it happened fast. Uh, it seems like just the other day we were talking and here they are. And so I would like for you to welcome to the stage. We've invited them to come and do a panel discussion. I would like for you to welcome to the stage. I also, if you were here over the weekend, uh, y'all could come on, ladies, you come on. So um, I, I would like for you, uh, is, is Kathy and Melinda, I would like for them to introduce themselves and just say a little bit about yourselves. And, uh, and yeah, there you go. I'm Kathy Little. Uh, I don't know how much you want to know. Last time you were asking us about a weird thing about us, but. Well, that seemed to uh, trigger uh, yeah, my I'm friend only... here. And I didn't want to trigger her in second <laughs> service in front of all these new friends. Yes. Because so, um, let me, let, let, move me back up a little bit. Okay. Let me just slow down. I'm so excited. Um, whatever y'all do, let me just encourage y'all. If you come up and talk to Melinda after service, make sure you only say koala and not that word that we put after it in the South, okay? She is a, a big fan of koalas. Y'all don't call it that other word. Don't say bear, okay? Just don't say it. It'll trigger her. Now, I set you up. Now, go. Thanks. <laughs> They're marsupials. <laughs> it's a thing. It's a thing. It is a thing. Uh, so I have been a worship leader for over 30 years now, and um, Melinda and I co-lead a ministry called Face to Face Ministries, and we are really all about helping people connect interactively and experientially with Jesus. And and you have a podcast. We have a podcast. I think I've told the church about, but let's just mention it. I don't know if we did first service. Let's mention the podcast. So a year ago, September, we were having a conversation with a group of ladies who wanted to know about heart healing. And because we know a lot about a lot of models, we were telling them about a lot about a lot of models. And there's like, they said, can, can we find all of this in one place? Is there a centralized resource? And the answer was no. And so she said, you need to write a book. I told Melinda that. And she's like, mm-mm. She took it. <laughs> I've written a couple of books, but Melinda's background is in film. And so uh, we just felt like we needed to sit face to face with leaders and founders, like top of the pyramid people who God had revealed different pieces of revelation to about how to help people get connected with Jesus and healing for their hearts. And we began asking and they kept saying yes. So we have 30 people we've interviewed and 46 episodes out right now on the podcast, and it's being heard all over the world. We've got people that are contacting us from places like Sweden and England and all over the place, and so that's kind of opened up some doors. And I can testify, it is amazing content. When she told me about it, I started listening. I ha I've listened to every single one, and I'm current, and every Tuesday I'm waiting for the new one to come out. No pressure. <laughs> Kathy, who edits them all. <laughs> Well, I'm a California girl with a Southern heart. I'm telling you, um, I was sharing this weekend that I was born and raised in the San Francisco area, but then I was transplanted to the South uh, for grad school and then uh, was introduced to Western North Carolina and absolutely fell in love. I actually lived in Atlanta for a year. I love the South. And I just want to say that because I'm sad to leave. I'm, I mean, we're going to be in the South for another week, but the way that you guys talk, I know I talk funny, you talk normal, and I, I covet your, the way you talk because it's so beautiful and lovely and I think God speaks with a southern accent. Um, so that's about me that I, I, lo <laughs> I love the South. But I, uh, I am so honored to be here 
thank you for having us. And you probably are like, we didn't know there were guest speakers, so we didn't really mean to have you. you we just showed up. But uh, thank you for being here, and we're just excited to share with you our hearts because uh, we love you even though we don't know you because we are all one in him. And so we're just so, so blessed to be here. These ladies did Friday and Saturday pour into this church in a huge way. Uh, Kathy led worship and uh, Melinda spoke and they shared together. And there is just so much. I think we will see at some point in the future the amount of the, the deposit that was made in these two days. They literally are an answer to prayer for me um, in what they're doing. Um, Ladies, we mentioned the word heart healing or inner healing, and so I don't want to assume anyone that is tuning in or anyone who is, I say tuning in, that is so old-fashioned, right? Nobody had to tune in. Anyone who dialed us up, anyone who clicked us, I don't know what you do. Anyone who's watching us out there in TV land um, or anyone here, I don't want to assume, hey, I don't need y'all up on the front row. I've got this, all right? <laughs> It's my wolf, my wolf, my wolf and my daughter over here. <laughs> Still like that southern accent. <laughs> um, I, in, in case anyone here has never understood or heard heart healing or inner healing, can we just talk for a few minutes about what that's, that is? So I'm going to tell you a story about a man named John. He's a real person. His real name is John. <laughs> And we had the privilege of meeting with him via Zoom a few months ago. And we used the tools that, that we, we uh, use a particular model, the Emmanuel approach, which is what we teach. And we had this prayer session with him. And he reached out to us after the fact to kind of give us some feedback. And he sent an email and he said, you know, I had some things in my life. I, I knew I wasn't really walking in the fullness of freedom and abundance, and I just didn't have a really great uh, connection with Jesus. There was just stuff in the way, and I went to counseling. Most people are familiar with counseling. He had some counseling, and he said, you know, it really wasn't super effective. In fact, he felt like it was a little counterproductive, you know, just kind of digging up stuff and not really getting anywhere. And so he eventually had a healing prayer session with a different tool. Uh, there's a different model of set of tools called sozo. The Greek word sozo means saved, healed, and delivered. It's what Jesus did. It's used over 100 times in the New Testament, the Gospels. It's what Jesus did. He didn't just touch and heal a, a blind eye. He actually healed the heart wounds connected to the blind eye or the, or the lame legs or the issue of blood or whatever it was. He, he was a full package guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, Sozo is another set of tools. And our friend John had gone and met with a prayer minister who was trained in that and had some breakthrough. There was some healing to some of the heart wounds where he was able to connect with maybe the root of some of the things that he was dealing with. But that, there was still something in the way. And so he ended up meeting with us. And the model that we use is really about helping people connect with Jesus and invite them, invite, the person invites Jesus to show them where he was. And it's not an issue of Jesus not being there. It's an issue of we're not always aware of where he is or aware of his presence. And so it's becoming intentional to see Jesus in that pain. And he said it absolutely radically transformed his life. He said, you know, I've had this memory for many years, and it always had all this pain attached to it. But now I've seen Jesus in that pain, and it no longer has pain. When I remember that, I've remembered the memory since the session, but it no longer holds pain. I cannot even see it the way I used to see it my whole life, because now Jesus has shown me where he was in that memory, and it completely changed the memory. So I'll just give you that as John's story, and that's kind of kind of where heart healing targets is where did the wound in your life happen? Why are you still feeling pain? Why are you still we call it triggered? Why is why is it that you're still reacting big to something very small now? Well, it's connected to something else. And Jesus can show you what that is. 
and he can show you where he was in that and he can give you his perspective on it and that connection with him will change everything have you ever tried something or um, been given something as a gift and or eaten somewhere new and you said I cannot believe I've never had this before how did I ever live without it um, and you know, Matt, Apple Mac came along, and we're like, "How did I ever? I, this, you guys run on Mac. How did I ever live without this? We use a GPS, and we're like, "How did we ever get anywhere?" <laughs> now, once you've discovered a GPS, whether you use it on your phone or something else, would you ever go back and just try to find your way around without even using a map? You would never. That would be stupid. I mean, really. None of us are that smart that like, well, I'm going to try to drive to this weird place in Texas. I'm just going to guess. I know I got to drive west, sort of. I mean, really, you'd end up probably in New York or something. I would anyway. You've had this, there's a GPS. And that's life changing, really. It has revolutionized us and how we get where we're going, where we want to go. Well, heart healing has even more profound effect. We experience heart healing for these places in our heart. We never want to go back to where we were. I mean, these songs sing about that. We, we're now in a new place. He creates beauty from ashes. None of us want to go back to the ash. <laughs> um, but how do we even get from that place? There's actually steps involved, like Kathy's explaining. And there's, you know, all of us have wounds. All of us have pain. All of us have experienced trauma of some sort. And when I say trauma, we often think some big dramatic incident. Well, trauma can be a little tiny subtle thing, but have manifestations in our life that um, crop up in subtle ways too. I just, can I share just a little story? Um, I, years ago, I won't tell the whole story like I did yesterday, but when I was in seventh grade, I was in math class uh, with Mr. Budka, and I shouldn't say his name because he might be listening, but um, <laughs> Lord let him. Bless you, Mr. Budka. <laughs> we do. I don't even know his first name, but um, you know, I had a, a elementary school crush on him. He was really cute until this moment uh, because he had a he had a math problem on the board and he was saying, Melinda, you need to solve this problem and we're not going to move on until you do. And I really struggled in math. I, I excelled in theater and sports and English and anything artsy, but I was not mathematically inclined. And I froze and I, I really tried to answer and I couldn't in any way. He finally said, we're not going to move on until you answer, answer. And I'm just like, and I started crying. And I felt totally ashamed and embarrassed and humiliated. And he was kind of flustered and said, OK, you answer it to somebody else. And in that moment, I did not know. Now, I, that, I could say that. And you're like, oh, well, that's, you know, my teacher did that to me, too. No big deal. You were in sixth grade. Move on. Deal with it. Well, I, I had no idea the effect that that would have on me over years the humiliation, the embarrassment, the shame. And so even when I was old enough to get a job a few years later, um, I refused to get anything to do with math, like a cashier job. I didn't know this. I didn't, I couldn't connect it back to that memory. The Holy Spirit showed me. And then for years I thought, I believe the lie, the filter. I was seeing life through a, a distorted lens that I'm never going to be good in math. I, I'm embarrassed to be called on and I'm going to be shamed and humiliated in public where I'm called on in some way. And I was a theater major. So it created some conflict in me of being ashamed and embarrassed and humiliated. I just thought it was my own intrinsic fault. Like, I've got to work through this and trust God more and just believe in myself and speak identity statements. And all those things are important, but none of those worked until God brought me back to that memory, showed me the effects that that had had on me, the humiliation. And that was a trauma, y'all. That was a trauma. It wasn't like he came up and hit me over the head, but that was a trauma because I felt alone and ashamed and humiliated. And so that had this filter on me for the next 20 years until the Lord brought healing to that place. 
And I know that sounds huge, but we all have these things where I'm, why do I get triggered? Why do I feel anxious in these certain situations? Why am I uh, always in relational conflict? Why can't I keep in relationship? There is something, it's not intrinsically wrong with you. Something, there's a place of wounding in you. And so, but then we get ashamed. We get ashamed like, oh, I, I didn't pray enough and I'm not living up to this pastor's expectation and I'm not reading the Bible enough and that's why I'm having these behaviors in relational conflict. No, it's wounding that hasn't been healed. It hasn't been processed. So when we invite Jesus into that place, he deals with the root, not just the fruit. We can deal with the fruit all day and say all the prayers and listen to all the sermons and read my Bible for 16 hours a day. But if I don't get to the root and allow Jesus to bring his healing light to that place, then all that's just going to be a lot of hard work. (laughs) and not develop very much in our life except some tiredness. <laughs> Absolutely. You, uh, the, the counseling or the um, inner healing or heart healing model that they taught us over the last two days is called the Emmanuel Approach. And uh, when Kathy and I first talked, she mentioned several things and even uh, different things that they're cross-trained in. And we, we've talked around here through the years about different models. Some of you have been involved in Sozo. Uh, some of you have heard me talk about nuthetic counseling, biblical counseling. And we, we, uh, we're not new to any type of counseling or or healing work. And, and for years, we've talked around here about uh, your need to connect with Holy Spirit and let him help you. But for anybody that says, okay, what's new about this? Well, first of all, Dr. Carl Lehman, who, who designed this whole thing and they were trained by, it is so clearly articulated how you can walk somebody through it. Everyone in here, even the youngest kid in here, I heard Dr. Carl say one time, a three-year-old could learn to do this. And it really is that simple of helping people learn how to connect with Jesus. You know, some, and you may be here today, and maybe this is foreign to you, some folks don't even know that Jesus wants to connect. It's so cliche now to say it's relationship, not religion. But what does that even stinking mean? Relationship. I mean, are you relational with him? I mean, I know you probably grew up singing in the garden, but have you ever been in a garden with him? Have you ever been alone with him? Have you ever seen him, talk to him? You can't do that. Yes, you can. He wants to be that real to you. And I know that's kind of earth shattering for some of us. I don't think, but the, the problem is some of us are afraid as I was for so many years. I don't want to see him because if any man sees his glory, he will die. What's going to die in you or the parts that need to be let go of. And what's going to come to life in you is the parts that are you, who you really are. And that's why it's so important. So there were different modalities that we have talked about, but you really laid into teaching us the Emmanuel approach. Is there anything that you could help us understand why you guys landed on that as uh, your main one? I just spoke last, so it's your turn. It's your turn. (laughs) Turnsies. The Emmanuel approach is based on brain science. It's based on how God designed our brain to connect with him. That's That's you disconnecting from the microphone. (laughs) (laughs) It's based on brain science. God actually designed our brains for a relational connection with him and with other people. And the Emmanuel approach... Dr. Carl Lehman is a Christian psychiatrist, board certified medical doctor. He's put tens of thousands of hours of research, 30 years of his life studying this. And with brain scans now, you can actually see what parts of your brain light up under certain circumstances. And I don't know if you've noticed on the the magazine rack at the grocery store or maybe in a doctor's office, but a lot of mainstream media is starting to catch on that gratitude and appreciation and positive memories are good for your brain. We have no problem dwelling on bad things. We have no problem imagining worst case scenarios. We have no problem dwelling on what's wrong and what's hard and what's painful. But did you know that if you choose to focus on positive memories, positive experiences, things that 
real life memories, things you've experienced that bring you joy, because of the way God wired our brains, you can, you can experience the effects of a positive memory in your present day moment. Because your experiences, your memories, encounters, experiences, memories, things, all of those are right-brained activity. The left brain is where facts are stored. The left brain keeps time. The right brain doesn't. So if you have a positive memory from when you were you know, 15 and you had an awesome family vacation to Hawaii and you watched this amazing sunset and you saw whales and you just have all that feel good, you can sit now as a 52-year-old person and you can recall that memory and, and observe all the details in that memory in your mind's eye and refresh that memory and your body will respond the same way it did in the moment. Serotonin is released, dopamine is released, oxytocin is released because the right hemisphere of your brain thinks it's current news. Conversely, that's also why you can be reminded of a traumatic event as a 52-year-old person that happened when you were 10 and your brain doesn't know that those years have passed. Which is why if you hang on to an unprocessed memory and you do not see Jesus in it and you do not see Jesus' perspective on it, you will always feel like it's current and a part of you will be stuck at the age that that happened. But the Emmanuel approach is about focusing on the positive memory, the brain science of dwelling on that, expressing gratitude and appreciation, and it brings your brain online. We love it because it works. We use it because it works. Yes. It always works. And if it doesn't work quickly and easily immediately, there's usually a reason why and we can help you navigate those blockages. We've got more advanced tools for that, but it really works. That's why we use it. It works really well. Yeah, I, I love the brain. I'm definitely not a brain scientist. I use <laughs> Melinda terminology instead of the, all the neurotransmitters. I say feel good chemicals in our brain. But the beautiful thing about the way God made our brain is that when we think about something we appreciate and actually feel gratitude for, our brain releases oxytocin and dopamine, which are feel-good chemicals. They're designed by God to actually bring us peace and joy. They're good things. Some people take like antidepressants and they're synthetically produce these things, uh, like Prozac and other things. And so, but when we do practice appreciation and gratitude, our brain naturally releases these feel-good chemicals. So we can actually make ourselves feel good. When he says, give thanks, you know, thank me, remember the good things I've done, it's not because he's an egotistical maniac. It's because it has nothing to do with what he needs. It's because he knows it's good for our brain. And what something else that I love is the way he created our brain is that when I focus my appreciation on him, my brain biologically bonds with him. Our brain bonds with whoever I aim my appreciation toward. This can work in relationships, horizontal relationships too. I'm thinking about something I really appreciate about Elizabeth, who I really do. I, my brain will actually start bonding with her as I intentionally think about things I appreciate about her. This works in the context of relationship. This is why I love it so much as well. Everything she said, but I also love it because it works to heal me. It works in horizontal relationship as well as this relationship, not only removing barriers to intimacy, but it helps me in my re these relationships because he has created us to be in relationship with one another. But if we're walking around with a bunch of wounding, we're not going to be able to be our true selves. We're not going to be able to walk in healthy relationship. A definition of joy by Dr. Jim Wilder, who's a neurotheologian, that's just a big fancy word for he's a brain scientist and he really loves studying about God. <laughs> And, but he's like really smart. Uh, he says, joy is knowing someone is happy to be with me. And, you know, if, if I'm not happy to be with myself, I can't be happy to be with anybody else. And so if I start with myself first and getting heart healing and knowing that Jesus is happy to be with me, even on my very worst day, doing the worst things that I've ever done in my entire life, and he's still there with a smile going, 
I am the definition of joy, Melinda, and so I'm happy to be with you, even though you just totally screwed up. I am so happy to be with you. I may not love what you just did because it's going to affect you negatively, but wow. I am so happy to be with you, baby. He does call me baby. I'm so happy to be with you. And I get to experience that kind of joy from him, then I can be happy to be with you, and that releases joy in you. Yeah. This is the way he created our brain. It's marvelous. It's wonderful. So much of what he instructs us to do, again, is not for his benefit. It's because our benefit and how it's good for us. He's really concerned about our joy and our happiness and living that abundant life in a place of a healed heart. And one last thing I do want to say about the Emmanuel approach and why we really love it is because in a weekend event like we just did, a two-day training, you can walk away fully equipped with basic tools to help yourself connect and help somebody else connect with Jesus. Uh, we love the other models. We honor the other models. We use tools from the other models. Uh, some of them take a, a while to actually master and be good at. Uh, they're a little bit more involved. They require more mentoring and uh, more training. But the Emmanuel approach is designed with simple steps and a safety net. So if you're ministering to somebody and you get in over your head and you're not sure what to do, there is a safety net that you can land the plane very safely and no, there's no harm. So we are seeing God's heartbeat for healing his bride. And it's going to take a lot of people to be trained up to help that happen. And so we love the transferability of it as well, so that it can be easily transferred into your church. You have several people in this church now that attended the training that have real tools in their belt right now. They can help you with, with connecting with him. I just want to highlight, because it was so good yesterday when uh, Melinda said it, I just want to highlight it. He doesn't need your worship. God doesn't need your worship. And I know we've talked about that around here, but please hear that. For those of you that may be uh, guests with us today, God doesn't need your worship. You need to worship him because you need it. It's you. It's so egotistical to think that God needs anything from us. You know how we always talk around, around here, God is not unhappy. I have never served, my God has never been unhappy. You, you don't have to make God happy. What a sad little God that you have to make happy. God is happy, and he invites us into his joy. Amen. He just invites us in. Ladies, um, can you share with us, if you were able to look into that camera or say to anyone here, the one thing that you wish the church at large understood about heart healing, what would it be? You maybe have already answered it. I don't know. That was good stuff you were pouring out there is all I know. <laughs> kind of got on a roll, didn't we? It was very good. <laughs> I would say there is no shame. There is no shame to admit that you don't have it all together and that you don't look like Jesus yet. There's no shame in asking for help. There's no shame in allowing Jesus into the places that maybe you don't want anybody to know about because he already is happy to be with you. Even if you're messed up, even if there's stuff going on, you know, he knows who he knows who he created you to be. And that's what he sees. Jesus spoke to Peter moments before he knew Peter would deny him. And he said, hey, you're the rock. I'm going to build my church on you. And then Peter acted like this is not somebody that I would want to build my church on. He just denied me three times. But Jesus didn't get hung up on his behavior. Jesus saw who he was and who he created him to be, and who he, who he knew Peter would be as he walked into the fullness of his true self. So there's no shame. It's okay to be in process, and there's nothing to fear. And I think that's, that's, probably, that's probably something that I think, even if you don't acknowledge it on the surface, a lot of people may have a subconscious belief that I need to be afraid to be real before God because they may misunderstand who he is and how he feels about us to begin with. But he's already happy to be with you. He's already right there. He has never turned his back, ever. And he wants to bring you into the fullness 
of all of the benefits of his cross and resurrection. A lot of, a lot of people in the church are satisfied with, I'm forgiven of my sin, I go to, se- go to heaven someday. Sweet Y'all are missing it. Because there is so much. Just look up Isaiah 61. He came to preach the good news to the poor. I know that's what Chad's preaching on. We've been, we've been involved in your church the past month watching the sermons. He came to heal and bind up the brokenhearted. He came to set the captives free. He came to bring beauty from ashes. May the lamb receive the reward of his suffering with a healed bride. Yes, yes. You know, if we've, amen, uh, that needs some kind of response. If, you know, if we've arrived at perfection, then why do we need the Lord? He wants to partner with us. It's his joy to walk with us through pain. It really is. It's his joy. He suffered. He suffers with us. So looking at a painful thing, I don't want, I, that's too painful. Like touching a bruise, it's too painful, it's too painful. Well, a painful place will actually not heal until we're willing to walk through it and experience it. That sounds really scary, but it's not when we have our Jesus with us. You know, uh, uh, Patty Vallada, who teaches the Emmanuel Approach, gives this example of a five-year-old who really wants some ice cream in the very dark basement of her grandparents' house. And the basement's very creepy and scary, and there's a lot of spider webs, and the light switch is this string that hangs from the ceiling at the bottom of this, these rickety stairs. What five-year-old is going to want to walk down in the pitch black as much as she wants the ice cream, she would be too terrified. It's scary. There's unknown, unseen things down there in the dark. As much as I want, I'm too scared. But the grandfather, loving grandfather, takes the grandchild by the hand, walks her down carefully, turns on the light for her, picks her up, lifts the lid of the freezer, takes the ice cream and said, here, I want to give this to you and I'm with you in this. So that really dark, scary place is no longer dark and scary because she didn't have to go by herself. So any place that you think there's some dark and scary places in me, you know what? We all have them. There's there painful things have happened to all of us, but we don't have to go there alone and it doesn't have to take a really long time. That's the beautiful part of this heart healing is that it doesn't have to take a long time. We get to go with our loving, loving, loving Savior who's so safe and the best person to be with. He turns the light on. He brings the healing, and we get the reward, actually. (laughs) We get the prize. He did all the work, and we get the prize. That's the beautiful thing about heart healing. He's like, I've been waiting to give this to you. You just have to say yes. Just trust me. I, so I would say to any of you who are feeling like, oh, there's something might be stirring in me. That's so good. You have such a beautiful heart. You may not see it yet, but he wants to uncover that with help from others and show you your beautiful heart. You haven't been able to see it because it's been covered by all these things done to you or things that you didn't get that you needed. And now we just get to see how beautiful your heart really is. That's what inner healing is about. I, if you're new around here, you might not know uh, my testimony or my story, but it, it's there's a plenty of it online if you want to go dig it out, and that's not what this moment is about. But I do want to tell you something. 37 years ago when I showed up at a church, and um, because of my heart that was so longing to know Jesus— I'd been told the church was a place I could find that. I had gone to a service, and I experienced the presence of God because everybody was worshiping with their hands up. Man, the worship was so powerful. They were singing about a thirsty deer, and I was blown away. I didn't know you sang about thirsty deer at church. And and then they were singing, I worship, and I, and I heard somebody pray, and they spoke to Father God, not like he was way out there, God who's enthroned in the heavens, but the lady said, Father God, you're here with us, and I was like, that's cool and scary all at the same time and and but I but I felt such hope such hope and so I went to the pastor and I said hey uh, I just need to tell you here's what has happened to me here's where I've been and here's what went on and he looked at me and said don't ever mention that again and he threw a scripture at me and I call them scriptural bandages he said put this on that hurt 
He whom sun sets free is free indeed. You're free. Now go and be free. All right, I'm free. You're free. But what happened was I went back to my apartment and I was still me. I went back to my home. I was still me. Everywhere I went, there was still the same old stuff. And I'd go back and say, am I really free? Because I'm still doing this stuff and I still want to do this stuff. Well, we're going to cast something out of you. Pray something. But I want to tell you something. You know what could not be cast out of me or prayed out of me was me. Yeah. And I, and I didn't understand it. And so what I learned, and that's what many of us have learned, I learned that church is a group of broken, broken folks who are hiding their brokenness so they can all act like they're happy and tell everybody about heaven one day. And we all smile and be good. But the fact was I wasn't good in, 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 in uh, four years uh, into our marriage all the all that wasn't good manifested and i had to say to my wife we either find god or i kill myself i can't move forward and i am so glad that in that space i found out that the church had been lied to that we don't have to cover up our stuff and the only way you find healing and freedom is to invite emmanuel god to be with you in the midst of it and I want you to know, I don't know what you're going through, what brought you here today, but you don't have to suffer alone. And you do not have to be afraid because these pastors will not say to you, don't talk about that. In fact, what we're going to do is say, make an appointment with us and let's talk about that. But more than us talking about it, we're going to invite you to invite Emmanuel into your mess because that place where the enemy said, I'm going to hurt you and make you a nobody is the very place Jesus wants to make you a somebody and he wants to show you who you are in him because you are so much more beautiful than you even dare to dream you're so much more healed than you can even know and he wants to give you his perspective and it will change everything I watched that happen in this room yesterday with people I watched this there was one episode um, I got an episode one illustration thank you from the front row there was a demonstration of some heart healing and it was beautiful. And so I want you to know, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. Everybody say that out loud. I don't have to be afraid. Because I know what happens is some of you, your heart is palpitating right now. Some of you are right now saying, dear God in heaven, don't let him call for people to come on stage and get healed today. Jesus loves you so much more than that. This is not about some demonstration. This is about you finding healing. He loves you so much. He loves you so much that he would make your pastor do something silly in the middle of a conference to go and fill out an application for something I didn't even know I was filling out for, to connect me with this lady, to connect us with these people who have come here to train us so that we can make a difference next door. Listen, I when I first listened to it, I thought, I know all this stuff. I've been doing this for years. But what I didn't have was a model to teach it. And this has put, in wing, put wings and words on my heart so that I can easily help train us so that pastors Melinda and I can help move our team forward. And not only that, it's not just for helping others. The number one person it's for is helping you. Because the Emmanuel approach. Thank you for joining us at VC2, where we are real people meeting real needs with the reality of Christ. If you haven't already, subscribe so that you don't miss out on what's happening here at VC2. Also, check us out on Facebook and Instagram as VC2 Online.